Hi, my name is Amberlyn Edson, and I'm with Silver Strand Dojo International. Today we'll be studying the formal bow with the Boken, as it is outlined by Toshishiro Obata. We will also be studying the Toyoma Ryu Bato Jitsus in the style of Toshishiro Obata. We will study Yohonme technique number four, and we will also study Roponme kata number six. And then we will have Aikido interpretations of each kata. As we are demonstrating with a boken in place of the katana, we will follow the bow exactly but will not tie the sword or hold the sword in the scabbard as we bow. When training in class with the boken, first stand with correct posture, gripping the boken in the right hand with the ha or blade of the sword facing downward towards the ground and the length of the sword extending forward and down. From this stance, bow from the waist to the shomen or the kamisa. Now is the time to begin focusing the breath by breathing in with the bow and out when rising. This conveys the deep respect of the student for his or her predecessors. It is a reflection of the intent of the student who arrives in class for learning purposes only. The sword is held from a position in the right hand that is awkward for drawing and cutting. It is the exact opposite of a fighting stance. After returning to a sound posture from the waist, Turn the sword with the left hand to bring the blade upwards and the length of the blade down into the rear. If using a katana, hold the sword into the scabbard with your right thumb and hand. The sword will still be held with the right hand. From this position, bow to the sensei. This bow reflects again the intent of the student who enters the class with an attitude of humility and a willingness to learn. The sword is still held in the right hand, physically demonstrating that the student desires to train and not to fight. After returning to an upright posture, bring the sword upward, cupping the tip with your left hand. Raise the sword horizontally to eye level and bow respectfully from the waist. The bow to the sword acknowledges the weapon's power to harm even its owner. With this bow, the student is asking the sword to not harm the person wielding it. From this position, bring the tip of the bokin or scabbard to the left side of the belt or obi and slide it through the belt. Salute the pommel by gripping the end of the pommel, or kashira, briefly. This will always be performed when sheathing. Then stand at attention for further instruction from the sensei. This kata begins with an assailant from the back who is immediately detected. Begin by sliding the right foot forward, easing the bokken from the obi and inhaling deeply. Pivot clockwise on the right foot while drawing the sword upward, bringing it overhead in one smooth motion. Stack another breath while turning. After turning completely around, slide the right foot back and make a left to right diagonal cut or kesigari single-handedly. Exhale strongly while executing the cut. Raise the sword overhead to the Jodan Gamai position, taking another deep breath. Grip the hilt with both hands and slide the left foot back while performing a right to left Kesayuri, exhaling forcefully. Slide the right foot forward into the Jodan Gamai stance, pausing for one full breath in Sanshin. Then clean the blade by performing the chibari, breathing out with a sweep. Prepare to sheath the sword by drawing the dull side or height across the opening of the scabbard or the cupped hand resting on the obi.
Sheath the sword while sliding the left foot forward. Salute the pommel and stand at attention. When aware of an assailant from the back, pivot clockwise on the right foot, breathing in deeply. While turning, sweep the hands upward to block a right-handed shominichi strike by the uke. While exhaling, rotate the uke shoulder, drawing the arm down across the uke. The uke then strikes with the left-handed munetsuke. The tori steps back while inhaling and blocking the extended arm. Then the tori exhales, performing a gokyo, and exhales again, stepping forward with the right foot, giving the uke a forward front roll. At the end of the technique, remain in a peaceful sanshin, meditating for a moment in awareness with good intent. This involves two attackers engaging from the front and the back. The most immediate attack is engaging from the back. Begin by sliding the right foot forward to engage the attacker in front while inhaling deeply. Slide forward with the left foot, stack the breath, and begin to draw the sword. As this occurs, the presence of the second attacker is made known. Pivot counterclockwise on the left foot while drawing the sword. Deflect the blade while exhaling forcefully. Slide the right foot forward while inhaling and gripping the sword in the Jodan Kamai stance. Perform a right to left Kesaguri, exhaling forcefully. Pivot in place counterclockwise to face the first adversary while leaving the length of the blade to the back. Inhaling and raising the sword to the Jodan Kamai stance, perform a straight Shomen Uchi cut while exhaling strongly. The sword will end in the lower Gedan Kamai stance. Slide the right foot forward into the Chudan Kamai stance, taking a moment to breathe fully in San Shin. Clean the blade, exhaling with this sweep. Prepare to sheath the sword by drawing it over the opening of the scabbard. Slide the left foot forward, breathing out while sheathing the sword. Salute the pommel and stand at attention. In this sequence, the tori will be engaged by two attackers, one from the front of the tori and one from the back. The assailant from the back is reaching the tori more immediately. Engage the attacker in the front first, sliding the right foot forward, and then the left foot. Breath control at this point will be calm and deep. As the second attacker becomes apparent, pivot counterclockwise on the left foot while breathing in. The tori then breathes out, blocking a munatsuke strike by the uke. The tori will slide the left hand down the uke's arm, grabbing the wrist while inhaling. The tori's right hand will use a knife hand, tegatana technique, to get the elbow to bend. Then the tori will exhale, performing a shihonagi without throwing the uke. As the uke moves to escape, the tori breathes in, moving the uke's arm downward with a circular motion from the inside of the elbow, and then sliding under the uke's arm for a sankyo. From the Sankyo position, the Tori will perform a Sankyo projection, exhaling fully. At the end of the technique, the Tori will remain in Sanshin, slowly breathing, peacefully aware, awaiting any further need for defense. The cleaning of the blade with these Aikido interpretations of the Toyoma Ryu Bato Jutsu Katas 
takes a different form. The cleaning of the blade occurs now in the mind and the soul of the Tore who cleans this internally, the deep meditative breathing. The breath control brings the Tori back to a calm and clean state. The same breath control is tied to the outcomes of the Aikido techniques. As the Tori breathes throughout the movements, he or she brings good intent that manifests itself in a neutral desire for balance. Meditation is a way of cleaning the mind and the heart. After Aikido practice in the dojo, after a rough day at work, in times of stress, meditation brings one back to the present moment. When engaging fully in the present moment, positive outcomes have greater potential and trials are dealt with and then left behind with greater ease. Sword work in Aikido teaches us many things. It teaches us deep respect for the ancient samurai who risked their lives to bring us this knowledge. It teaches us the origins of the Aikido movements as Aikido was developed from the earlier Japanese martial arts. We have similar foot movements and hand gestures, utilizing the spherical rotations that make sword work so graceful and seemingly effortless. The two are related in many ways, but perhaps one of the most profound ways is that at the time of the ancient samurai, the sword was a necessary tool for keeping local and regional peace. In modern times and in stabilized countries, the sword is no longer used for keeping the peace. Aikido offers a way to diffuse violence with minimal violence and damage while still keeping the artistry of the swordplay alive. In order to be a well-rounded Aikido practitioner, it is important to learn the art of the swordwork in its most accurate forms because these exact movements sharpen and fine-tune Aikido flow and technique. Special thanks to Toshishiro Obata for keeping the ancient samurai art forms alive with these Bato Jitsu Katas. Arigatou gozaimasu.